Welcome to the Builder Knowledge Channel. This video is on the exterior finishes. The exterior finish can be on a home, cabin or large building. So let's get started. Please hit the subscribe button and click the like button to let us know you want more videos and so you won't miss any videos as they are published. Prior to putting up any type of exterior finishes, we need to ensure we have a good vapor barrier. They are always used on the warm side of walls and below attic insulation. There are several to choose from. Tyvek which is a well-known name brand, made by DuPont for water and air barriers. Asphalt laminated paper, such as that we put on roofs. Plastic films, most are clear, you need to be sure it is thick enough for your use. And then of course there is, aluminum foil. Make sure you use manufacturer's recommendations, and follow the guidelines required to ensure full coverage for any type you choose to use. This includes the proper overlap. Siding is an exterior finish so please don't be confused. There are many different types. Wood siding, which can be used as board siding, one in the same. Vinyl siding, stucco. Panel siding, fiber cement board. Aluminum siding, metal siding. Stone and many more, we will be covering just a few which can be on your advancement examination. Wood siding comes in many types. Board, which you may have heard of board and batten also. Channel rustic. Drop. Bevel. Bungalow. Dolly Varden. Log cabin. Tongue and groove. And panel siding. Board siding is available in surfaced or rough textured, this can be applied vertically or horizontally. It requires a minimum of 1 inch overlap which is recommended. You will use 10D siding nails to attach the boards. Channel rustic siding literally has a channel when put together. Has a half inch lap and a 1 and a quarter inch channel when installed. Use 8D siding nails for 6 inch widths. For wider widths, nail twice per bearing. For drop siding, use 6D nails for tongue and groove. Use 8D for ship lap. It is available in 13 different patterns. Types of patterns are ship lapped and tongue and groove. Next we have bevel siding. As you can see in the picture, it is beveled. Minimum 1 inch overlap is recommended. Use 6D siding nails. May be used with the smooth face exposed or the sawn face exposed for a textured effect. Then we have bungalow siding. Minimum 1 inch overlap is recommended. Use 8D siding nails. Thicker and wider than bevel siding may be used with the, the smooth side or the sawn face exposed. Next is the infamous Dolly Varden siding. Minimum 1 inch overlap is recommended. Use 8D siding nails. It is thicker than beveled siding and has a rabbit edge. Then we have the log cabin, and those who have played with Lincoln logs know what these look like. Use 10D casing nails, and nail one and a half inches up from lower edge of piece. The tongue and groove is a favorite of many. Use 6D finish nails for 6 inch or less widths. For wider widths use 8D siding nails. Available in smooth or rough face, can be applied vertically or horizontally. Panel siding can be installed more quickly than board siding, and is usually one of two materials. Plywood, available in a variety of textures and patterns, and it has a high shear rack resistance. Hardboard, similar to plywood, and available in a variety of textures and patterns. Does not have a high shear rack resistance of plywood siding, so typically applied over structural sheathing. In the picture here, this is known as T111. Fiber cement board is made up of cement, ground sand, cellulose fiber, and it is autoclaved. Manufactured as planks for lap siding and also as panels and shingles. It is durable, insect, water and fire resistant and resembles traditional wood siding. Let's start with the installation of board siding, starting with horizontal installation. You first must allow wood siding to acclimate to the local humidity by storing horizontally 
and raising off the ground, with wood blocks or scraps. You will apply first row, so it is level and plumb in a straight line. Bottom should be 1 inch below the top of the foundation. Then nail a spacer strip equal to the thickness of siding to the wall, at the bottom edge of the first row, for beveled siding. Lay out the rows of siding, so they align with the top of the window drip cap, and bottom of the window sill. Use a story pole to determine layout of siding boards. For vertical installation, you still need to allow the wood siding to acclimate to the local humidity by storing horizontally and raising off the ground with wood blocks or scraps. It is a simpler way than horizontal. You will position the starting corner board so it is level and plumb. Nail blocks between the studs at 16 to 24 inches apart when you don't have sheathing covering your walls. Next we will cover your joints. Use will but joints between the ends of siding boards. Be sure they fit tightly and stagger the butt joints. By staggering the joints, that does not mean you put them in all willy-nilly. You know what I mean, the joints should line up on the wall, such as every other one, lined up. Use a metal but joint to allow faster application of board siding, and to provide a weathertight joint. Where vertical and horizontal siding overlap, be sure the vertical siding overlaps and is above the horizontal siding, or you will need flashing such as a drip cap. Always keep in mind where the rain will travel. Lastly, we will cover corners. Corners must be weathertight and neat. Metal corners provide a mitered effect and are easy to install. Wood outside corner boards and inside corner strips can be used. Now that we told you about board installation, it's now time for panel siding installation. You will apply the weather barrier directly over the wall studs and under the panels. Please note, this application is when you do not have plywood sheathing under your panels. You will then apply flashing and drip caps over door and window openings. Seal all panels with a paint primer or a water repellent preservative. You must leave 1 8 inch gap along all panel edges to allow for expansion. You will then nail panels 6 inches on center, along the edges, and half an inch from the edge, then 12 inches at the intermediate studs. Use 6D non-staining box, casing, or siding nails for panels half an inch or less thick. You will use 8D nails for thicker panels. Start at a corner and place the first panel. The panels can be placed vertically or horizontally. However, you must have blocks installed if installing horizontally with no plywood sheathing. Lay out the next panel, allowing for 1 8 inch gap, 4 square edges, and 1 16 gap at shiplap joints, doors and windows, then place remaining panels. As stated earlier in this video, fiber cement board is durable, insect, water and fire resistant and resembles traditional wood siding. Manufactured as planks for lap siding, panels, or shingles, in the following dimensions. Planks are in 5 16 and 7 8 inch thickness, 5 and 1 4 to 12 inch widths, and 10 to 16 foot lengths. Panels are available in 4 by 8 foot panels in 5 16 and 7 16 inch thickness. Shingles are available in planks, measuring a quarter inch thick, by 16 inches wide, and 48 inches long. You must be careful when cutting fiber cement board. A crystalline silica dust can be created, which is harmful to us. There are tools we can use to cut fiber cement board without creating the crystalline silica dust. Hand tools such as a hand snip and a notcher can be used indoors and outdoors. Also, pneumatic power shears can be used indoors or outdoors. Shears are the preferred method of cutting fiber cement siding because crystalline silica dust is not generated when the siding is cut. Dust reducing miter saw or circular saw shall only be used outdoors because crystalline silica dust is generated when the fiber cement siding is cut. You must wear proper respiratory protection when cutting fiber cement siding with a saw. When installing, you will cut one to one and a half inch piece and place it along the bottom edge of the wall. This will allow the bottom to cant out for placement. Use roofing nails at the top to secure 12 inches on center. Place following pieces the same, with the same facing showing. Next up is vinyl and metal siding.
we will start with vinyl siding. Vinyl siding is durable, dent and abrasion resistant, prefinished plastic product designed to look like board siding. It expands and contracts with temperature changes. Vinyl siding is easy to place, it takes time to set up the inside and outside corners, the starter strip, the J-channel for doors and windows, and the channel for the bottom and top of the wall, along with the finished strip and the top J-channel on the wall and in the channel in the bottom of the windows. When nailing, do not nail hard into the wall. The vinyl siding needs to move slightly for expansion and contraction. If nailed all the way into the wall, it may buckle under high heat. Metal siding, also known as aluminum siding, is available with a smooth finish or embossed wood grain. Metal siding is placed either vertically or horizontally, over sheathing, or directly to the stud frame. If you are not placing over sheathing, you must still have a vapor barrier. You have some of the same accessories as vinyl, but in metal, such as corner pieces, flashing, stiffeners, and other trim pieces. If you have aluminum siding, you must ground it to protect against electrical shock. This may be a requirement of how you ground in some building codes. A number 8 copper wire is connected to a cold pipe, such as a hose bib pipe or a steel rod that is embedded into the ground. You will first need to determine the square footage of the walls. You do this by multiplying the height and length to be covered then subtract the area of opening for doors and windows. You will then determine the footage of a single piece of siding. You will multiply the length and the width that will be exposed for a single piece of siding. You will then determine the amount of lap siding by dividing the square footage of the wall area by the square foot coverage of a single piece of siding. Reminder 6D nails for half an inch or less and 8D nails for thicker than half an inch. The previous slide is a lot to take in, so I will slow down a bit and break it down for you. For example, we have an 8 foot by 16 foot wall. 8 times 16 is 128. That's a total of 128 square feet to cover. We have a door that is 3 foot by 7 foot. 3 times 7 is 21 square feet. We then need to take the 21 feet from the door out of the total wall square footage. 128 minus 21 equals 107 square feet that we need to cover. Now that we have that number, let's figure out our siding. Our siding is 16 foot long and 10 inches in width, however, the exposure or face will be 8 inches. We need to divide 8 by 12, which gives us 0.6666, and it keeps going. I will round up to 0.67. We needed to change inches to feet for our multiplication to be correct. 0.67 is the exposure in feet. We then take the length of our piece, which is 16 feet, and multiply times 0.67. 16 times 0.67 is equal to 10.72 square feet. Our final square foot number was 107 for our wall. We will divide 107 by 10.72, which gives us 9.98, or 10 pieces of siding needed. Reminder 6D nails for half an inch or less, and 8D nails for thicker than half an inch. And our final estimating is on panel siding, and it is even easier than lap siding. You will first need to determine the square footage of the walls. You do this by multiplying the height and length to be covered. Then subtract the area of openings for doors and windows. You will then determine the footage of a single piece of panel siding. You will multiply the length and the width. Panel siding comes in 4 by 8 sheets. Divide the square footage of wall area by square footage of a single panel. Let's break this one down to, as I am a visual learner. For example, we have an 8 foot by 16 foot wall. We multiply 8 times 16, and it equals 128 square feet that we need to cover. We have a door that is 3 foot by 7 foot. 3 times 7 equals 21 square feet. We then minus the 21 feet from the 128. 128 minus 21 equals 107 square feet that we need to cover. Sounds just like our last estimating, here is where it's easier. Our siding is 4 foot by 8 foot, 4 times 8 equals 32. 32 square feet. 
Our final square foot was 107 for our wall. We will divide 107 by 32, which gives us 3.34, or 4 sheets of panel siding needed. We hope you enjoyed this video enough to hit the subscribe button and click the like button. See you for our next video, thanks for stopping by.